I'm particularly thrilled to be asked to talk a little bit about Ed Fort McCall. Uh, I know that he was living in San Francisco. I've studied his biog, so I know this. And he was obviously inspired by all the great sights that are to be seen around San Francisco Bay. But there would always be a worry when you're painting well in a place like that, you come home and somehow your muse is gone. If you forgive this, he wondered had he left his art in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Irresistible. Anyway, he comes home um, and he finds himself in Athol, and uh, the majesty that he probably found on the west coast of the United States, he found suddenly in spades in Athol, whether it was the cliffs, whether it was the, the, the majestic sea, the Atlantic Ocean which is ever changing, uh, even the peat bogs, and a vibrancy of colour that has inspired him. Um, he chose not to live there, he chose to live in Delgany for some reason, given the Garden County has so many pristine uh, views, such a bountiful county in terms of uh, inspiration, uh, but I can see why he turns to the West uh, for his, his painting. I suspect, you know, I've been to the West many, many times, and I seem to spend most of my time there on pretty soft days. Um, and what happens to me on a soft day, you're looking at a landscape and it just kind of melds into multiple shades of grey. Uh, for Patrick, that seems to just form uh, the backdrop through which the vibrant colours of, for example, uh, the, the, the rusting roof of an old shed uh, suddenly becomes vividly uh, available to us as the viewers of his canvases. Um, he says he doesn't go in for detail. Um, it's the shapes, the, the way the, the houses, the sentinels, as he puts it, which I think is a, a very good title for his work tonight. They act as, uh, if you like, upright monuments to the generations that have gone. Almost 200 years of emigration. Once again, we're planted by it. Hopefully it'll be a, a, a passing phase like the other phases were. But those empty houses, those empty outbuildings, testament to all of those who've gone before. And what I like about the paintings is that the, the lack of detail is all the more to bring us into our view. If you're looking at a landscape, you see those shapes, the outbuildings, the white buildings, sometimes those rusted roofs, sometimes no roofs, uh, stone walls, all of that kind of thing. Um, you don't know what's going on as you view them from afar, but you have to guess at all the stories that uh, are untold, but tellable, uh, were you ever to find out the, the history of each individual building. But you don't need that. The, the magic is there, the romance is there, the mystery is there, and the sadness is there. Um, so I found in coming to these paintings um, that I, I could transport myself back. I also feel, looking at the work, that uh, Porik sees the world more vividly than the rest of us. Um, as I say, when I see uh, a landscape, I, I may notice the shapes and the colours, but not as Porik sees them. They seem to just take on another life, an inner life. Uh, for me, demonstrating the, the, the beauty of the laws of physics, and I'm a scientist after all, and how what the artist does on the canvas uh, translates the light that hits that canvas into uh, the beauty that we behold. Um, it's, it's a great pleasure to be here tonight on this very auspicious occasion, the first of many, many exhibitions, um, but we could not have started on a better note, and I commend to you all the work of Porek, and thank you, Deirdre and Denise, for inviting me along to the office. Appreciate it. Well done.